Um, I heard him sing uh, like three years ago at an a cappella show, and there was local uh, indie musicians from Seattle, and they all came and sang, you know, sometimes little tiny songs and beautiful harmonies, and it was an amazing show. And it was an old church, um, what well, used to be an old church, and is now a performance space, and the acoustics are incredible. He, he was the um, show-stopping last number. He came on and sang a Judy Garland song, The Man That Got Away, and it was one of the most transcendent experiences of my life. It was incredible, and I just remember thinking, that voice in this space is gonna go in a film of mine, and this just seemed like the one to do it in. And, and the song didn't work. I, I wanted to recreate the moment, but um, the song didn't work, and so he and I worked, um, we looked at his back catalog, we looked at um, you know songs, and this he ended up really writing for, for the, um, the movie, and, uh, and it's very fulfilling for me to have. Have him in there. Yes. Was your script as improvisational as you did in previous films? Same same approach. This seemed a little smoother, a little more scripted in a good way, but it just seemed very. It just seemed a little smoother. Maybe it's because of more silence. I don't know. Yeah. Was it as improv? Was there as much improvisation in this film as my last um, few? I've, I've had three films that were really very very. The second and third features were completely improvised, all the dialogue, and the, and the last one, my your sister sister, was um, about, we, we figured 80% improvised and 20% um, as I wrote the script. This one, um, Rosemary thought that we flipped it, so it was like 20% improvised and 80% scripted. It was definitely more scripted. Um, and I, I always gave the actors uh, the freedom to go off and to find if there was an opportunity and opening, they would they would often take it, and sometimes the script would evolve as we were shooting. But um, yes, it was much more scripted, and a lot of times they just said, "We really like the lines. Can we just use the lines?" And we'd be like, "Yeah, sure, you know, if you really like them." So um, and it was just yeah, it was it, it, it was a different. You know, my last couple of films too with Mark Duplass, a lot of the scenes were really um, kind of bantery and, you know, the, the whole piece of the film is just really different and this is just so much more sort of meditative, there's a lot more silence, a lot slower conversations, more calm. So it just, yeah, it didn't, it didn't, it was a different vibe. And for me, it's really just whatever works for each project. I, I'm very comfortable working either way or, or in this case, kind of a hybrid, but, you know, more and more scripted. And then I have to, I mean, I have to give credit to the actors for their incredible inspiration, like, I mean, Josh Price, God bless that man. Um, climbing up on the table. <laughs> that was pure, you know, that was not a line, but it was purely, that was not in the script. I did not tell him to do that. It was just pure genius out of that man's brilliant mind. So um, I, I have to tell you a secret confession, which is that I, I would like to do uh, to, to Josh what, you know, for Josh, what happened to Richard Jenkins. You know how he was that guy that you just, you recognized him, and he was in a lot, and he was a solid, you know, journeyman actor, and you always saw him in many, many roles, but then, then he, his name became known, you know, um, because of Tom McCarthy and, and, you know, other films and, and television, and um, that's what I think should happen to Josh Price, because <laughs> he's a writer. After Isle and Yeah. Yeah, over there. It's you, ma'am. Hi, Isle. Um, and one of the reasons that I put 
the Tomo song and um, and the performance, the, the people watching the performance of that song in the film was because there were a lot of different ways to reach that state and and uh, MDMA or, or you know pot or alcohol or you know any drug that is used is really is like a psych it, it really is a physiological trigger to a uh, to a place in our brains that we can access any number of ways through meditation or through music or through any any number of ways. Um, but um, yeah, th that was just the kind of place that I, I wanted to go in, as a filmmaker. And, and for those two characters, too, it really is more about their characters getting to a place where they're just, they're ready to just surrender and just break out and do something completely that they would never do normally. You know what I mean? They're, they get to a place in their lives where they just have to, they just have to try something new, basically. So I definitely wasn't trying to make a message like, you know, just take MDMA, everything will be okay, um, at all. <laughs> so don't take that. Yes? So that was kind of along my lines, but more of the writing process as uh -huh. a writer. Like, you'll write it, you go, oh no, people are going to think this. So did you have any second thoughts about that? That like you were putting out the ecstasy with all that, everything? Yeah, I mean, I did worry about that a little bit. I, she was out wondering if I was worried as a writer when I'd be putting out that message. And um, I, I mean, I, I trusted that ultimately, especially in the edit, edit, edit room, as it was coming together, I actually, I just felt like I, the story was, was clearly not doing that. So I just trusted that the audience was going to, you know, I mean, and they I, don't seem like the type of people that are going to go become drug addicts. But. Yeah, yeah, you know, and I, and I put in a scene, I mean, I, there's a lot of questioning, right, throughout the film. It's like, well, like her boyfriend, it's like, you know, he shuts her down. It's like, we, the last thing we can do is take drugs. You know, it's, there's, there's definitely this sort of reality check throughout the movie, like, you know, and it's, it's not, I don't feel like it's glorified or it's like sanctified somehow. Um, and, and I did, I will say that I did, um, uh, somebody suggested that maybe it could be a placebo, and I played around with that idea. Um, that, again, it was more just the, the act of like, okay, just, I need, I, need, I need a permission slip. You know, I think of the Josh Pice character especially, I remember there was, I remember people in like college and high school who were so just bound up and terrified, couldn't even talk to a human being, and they would take one sip of alcohol, you'd see them at a party, and they'd literally take a sip, and they would just go crazy, you know? It's like, yeah, man! And it was because they just needed that little, like, that permission, you know? They just, okay, it's okay, I can be somebody else, you know? And so I played around with the idea of it being uh, a placebo, but then ultimately it just didn't, it didn't read. Plus it, it just, I figured that uh, it also read as when you saw her opening the aspirin bottle and taking out a couple of pills, and I thought, well, maybe it'll just seem like she keeps her drugs in an aspirin bottle. I don't think, <laughs> I don't even think it'll read as a placebo. So I, I just let, I let it go. I just went with it. Yeah. Do you want to go there? No. Yes, yes. sir. Those uh, super close-ups, sometimes of skin, sometimes of plant life, that are driving the focus. Could you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, the super close-ups. We had a few different toys. Um, on their hands, for instance, and on the moss, um, the bright, bright green moss, and um, we used tilt shift lenses um, that enabled you to keep uh, make the focal plane. You know, only one portion of the frame would be in focus. Um, and then the the macro 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 shots of the 